Hey everybody, this is Joshua Kameen here again with Our Tiny Homestead. This is my first time doing a video <clears throat> from my desktop, so we'll see how this goes. The purpose of this video is um, I had a request from somebody who has a connection that may be able to help share what's going on in our area. And if you've been following our channel, you, you already know kind of the message that I'm trying to share and what is going on um, not only in our area but all over the United States uh, when it comes to off-gridders, homesteaders, tiny house enthusiasts, things like that and um, and how hard our local governments are making it for us and to be honest some of the, the horror stories that are that are out there. Um, so I am filming this video, just a real quick video before I have to head out um, for the afternoon, uh, kind of a last minute decision that I made to kind of compile the stories, not just my own, but a few stories, recent stories that are currently going on right now. I'm not going to mention any names for the, um, or out of respect for these people and their privacy, um, but I am trying to get them together to share their stories, whether it be on another one of my video interviews or um, anonymously uh, just to get the word out there. So again, I'm compiling, the, I'm, excuse me, I'm compiling this video uh, per request from somebody who may or may not be help us to help us to get some exposure. Um, so to start out, just a quick summary of our story. Again, we, we built a tiny house on our 20 acre homestead. Um, we are lucky enough to to have the means to accommodate the, the, the county codes and what they're requiring us to do while well, we're, we're working on it. It's very stressful, it's very challenging, it's very hard, but we, my wife and I own two uh, successful small businesses and um, that, that is helping us to accommodate these requirements. Unfortunately, that isn't the case for a lot of people out here. Um, a lot of people out here don't have the means or just simply <clears throat> for whatever reason aren't able to accommodate these new rules and these new requirements. And some of these people, um, you, you'll hear in one of the sh stories that I'm about to share, they've been out here for, for 50 years and they're elderly and they just, they just don't have the ability. Maybe it has nothing to do with financial ability, but just they don't have the physical or the mental ability to to accommodate these these new requirements that are coming into place. Now, I am all about protecting the environment. We um, are opening an eco-friendly retreat and venue on our property up here. Um, we've gone through the conditional use permitting process, and actually, I'm not sure if you heard at the beginning of the video, we're actually, um, there's construction going on here right now, and there's heavy machinery outside so it's uh it, and it has to do with the environmental um what we're working on right now so we are trying to be as environmentally friendly as possible but when you are in a totally unincorporated and disconnected area we have no county no county support up here we are totally off the grid which is what we wanted which is why we purchased up here we have solar haul water well water um, and we are trying to build a self-reliant, eco-friendly retreat. And when they're demanding that we abide by the same rules and codes that apply to in-city residences and in-city businesses that have all of the, the amenities and the support from the grid, it just doesn't make sense. And that's what we're trying to, to change here. There, there needs to be allowances and understanding for this different type of lifestyle because it simply isn't the same as living in the city. And that's, personally, that, that is all we are after. There needs to be some allowances and some variances in place for these types of situations. We should not have to abide by codes that are put in place in incorporated cities and, and where they have all those amenities. So um, just a little bit of, uh, to recap about us, we uh, built a tiny home on our property. Um, we are building an eco-friendly uh, wellness retreat and venue on our property. 
and we personally um, knew that we were going to have to go through the conditional use permitting process. It was a very lengthy and very extensive uh, process with two board hearings involved with the city council and planning and zoning, and we knew that we were going to have to go through that, but we didn't know that we couldn't advertise and start pre-booking for small events prior to getting that. Um, advertising for a business and pre-booking and actually having business activity on the property are two completely different things. And we were slapped with multiple fines. They found us on Facebook. They took screenshots of all of our Facebook posts, They, um, which was very, it, it felt violating because um, they took us into this, this violation hearing um, saying that we were violating code by advertising for a business on our property, which if you look at the code, that's, that's not the case. Um, we did not have an attorney. We do not have the money to hire an attorney. Uh, they had an, an attorney in, in the initial violation hearing present. And he told us, A, that um, he would argue that we cannot advertise until we uh, have our conditional use permit, which is, that's their prerogative. That's what they demanded. So we stopped advertising. And they also said that we couldn't even have friends and family on our property until we had it all permitted and expected because they didn't know if it was safe, which I'm pretty sure that they are not allowed to say that, you know, we own this property outright. There's no liens on it. Uh, we paid cash for our 20 acres up here. And um, if we wanna have family on our property, that's, that's our right. And they told us that that wasn't the case. So um, that's one, that's just a small piece of the pie when it comes to our personal situation right now. Uh, there is a couple that is over 70 years old. They've lived in this area for 50 years, and they obtained permits for their building and their structures uh, almost two decades ago. Um, there's supposed to be a grandfather clause in place, and what is happening, from what I understand, there is a person who has been designated a hatchet man um, who the county has employed to come through and uh, sign out, pass out violation notices and find people. And he has been going all across our area and finding people for anything he can. And this couple, he came in and told them that they're, they were not grandfathered in. They, their permits that they currently had were no longer valid. And they, I believe right now, they're upwards of $9,300 in fines. And they either have to remove everything that they were fined for, um, which I believe is their home, and, uh, and or um, pay the fines and come into compliance, which they don't have the ability to do. So they're packing up, selling everything they have, and I believe that they're leaving now, uh, which is horrible and sad. And, and allowances and variances need to be made for these kinds of situations. Um, the, I get really upset just thinking about this, but the, one of the other stories is a, a family that came here, bought their property, and wanted to do things the right way. They wanted to be in compliance from the beginning. They wanted to work with the county to, uh, the first thing you have to do when buying a piece of property and wanting to, wanting to build a home um, not, maybe not the first thing, but one of the first things that you have to do is obtain a uh, discharge for your septic system, an approved wastewater and waste disposal system. So a septic tank, um, conventional septic, alternate septic, uh, we are huge parcels up here. The, these are not, our nearest neighbor is over a thousand feet away from us. And um, if, if you were talking about a track, a development, yeah, you, you don't want houses back to back to back with, with septic tanks because there's no disposal field. That there's not enough ground to treat that effluent. I understand that. But this couple had a, a huge parcel, a huge piece of land, and they tried for a, between six and seven months to obtain the proper permitting to put their septic in so they could start building their home. And they were unable to do it various reasons the county kept on kicking them back kicking them back and they were unable to do it this is just again these are three stories mine the elderly couple and this family these are just three stories and there are many many more where people are afraid 
to come out and talk because they're afraid of what the county is going to do to them. That's that's not right. I mean, these are these. I'm quoting. They are afraid of what the county is going to do to them if they come forward and they share their story. Um, people saying that. I mean, that's a red flag. That, that shouldn't be happening. Um, I'm a veteran. I served my country. I, I I came back home, and I'm an entrepreneur, small business owner, and and I should be supported by my local governments. I should not be fighting and begging for help and trying to get them to work with me. And nobody, and no citizen, not just me as a veteran, and no citizen should have to fight the government that is supposed to protect and serve them, to serve them, um, to, to live a happy and free life on their own property that they own. It's just, it shouldn't be the case. Um, so I'm going to keep the rant to a minimum at the end here. It's really hard for me because I'm very passionate about this. But to all of you who have sub subscribed to our channel, I'm very new at being in front of the camera. I really appreciate your support. I, again, my, my main goal, I don't want the attention here. I, I don't uh, feel comfortable in front of the camera. I am trying to share this story. The word needs to get out there. All over the United States, they're trying to shut down the earth. I, actually, I haven't followed up on it recently. They might have already done it. They, have been, they were trying to shut down the earth ship movement um, in New Mexico. All over the, the country, if you want to have a tiny home now, you even if you own your own property and have your own land, it has become easier to live in a tiny home community, which is fine. That's great. But but that's becoming the, the only feasible way to live in a tiny home, is in a tiny home community. If you own your own property and you own a tiny home and that is how you choose to live as a law-abiding citizen, you should have every right to do that. And there needs to be variances in place for that. The, the way things are right now, um, it, it needs to change. And my main goal is raising awareness and to try to bring like-minded individuals together to, to appeal to the people who make these changes, um, just for some understanding. And, uh, and you guys, by subscribing to my channel and, and sharing these stories and just bringing attention to it, um, are helping with that. So I thank you, and I wish you guys the best, and we'll see you again soon.